is Sebron Coleman, and I am the Director of Educator Preparation for the UNLV College of Education here on campus. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to just extend my hand and my listening ear um, as someone else who has been going through the struggle as we watched um, just the state of civil unrest um, uproar after public lynchings by those who abuse their power and authority. So um, I would like to definitely provide my support and my listening ear. Um, please reach out if you ever need anyone to talk to, and that's not only for students, but that's also for faculty members too. Um, as faculty members, I know that, you know, and faculty and staff members, I know that we um, are often faced with battling between how do we have to be um, so professional and get all our jobs and when we're watching our brothers and sisters you know dying every day and so forth and um, sometimes the jobs do not provide the outlet that's needed for us to talk or provide the support um, for us to understand that the same way that a pandemic affects everyone um, seeing our innocent brothers and sisters killed in the streets you know affects us as well too and so um, I would just like to stand with in solidarity and to offer my support and to let you know that if you need to reach out and talk with someone um, I would be more than happy to to listen and I hope that you do the same thank you I'm Dr. Tanya Crabb licensed psychologist and UNLV CAPS counselor, I would like to take a moment to discuss my experiences with racism in America. Before I get started, I'd like to add some context. I am part of a multiracial family, meaning that my husband is white and my son is biracial. So a lot of these experiences of racism have occurred in the context of observing the differences between how my husband is treated and how I am treated. Um, one clear example was the day that we were looking for a home. Um, we just moved to the area and we were looking for a house to buy. On one particular afternoon, we stopped by a home that was advertising an open house. Um, we arrived within the hours that the open house was designated and my husband went to look for parking while I went to, you know, meet the homeowner and sort of introduce myself so that we can go into this open house situation. I went up to the door, I knocked on the door, a white male answered the door, took one look at me and told me, yeah, the open house is closed. I looked at the sign behind me, I looked at my watch and realized that we were still within the hours of the open house. It was confusing that the open house was closed, but I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe he closed it early today. I went back to the car and spoke to my husband and said, you know, the guy said the open house is closed. And my husband said, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why is it closed? We still got like a, there's still a lot of time left for this open house. I said, well, you know, that's what he said. And he was kind of nasty about it. So I don't feel comfortable going back up there. So my husband goes to the door, he knocks on the door and he says to the man, he says, so is the open house still on? And the man takes one look at my husband and says, it sure is and invites him into his home. Of course, my husband didn't go, but, you know, that's just one of the ways that racism profoundly impacts and disadvantages black people in America. That was not okay. And I am not okay. Hello. My name is Dr. Ana Marrero. I am an assistant director at the intersection at UNLV. I am a Latina, particularly a Caribbean Latina. And what that means is that the blood that runs through my veins is Spanish, indigenous, black, and colonizing white. I am aware of my background and I am very proud of my racial and cultural heritage. We have a saying in my culture, and the saying is, ¿Y tu abuela dónde está? And what that literally translates to is, and where is your grandmother? Where is your grandma? Where are your roots? And we use it 
particularly to remind some of us that you are not white, that there is black in you. And in these times, with everything that's happening to black lives, you have to come and claim your blackness and be part of this movement, this Black Lives Matter movement, because black lives are on the line. Black lives are in danger. And that is part of your background. Y tu abuela, ¿dónde está? As a father, son, husband, brother, uncle, actor, and proud employee of one of the most diverse campuses in this country, I want us to emerge from this pandemic with a new normal that is nothing like the old normal. I demand true justice, true equality for everyone, not just for the fragile and fearful among us. We are called to act with justice. We are called to serve one another and to walk humbly as one. I know the work to manifest these changes will be challenging. I know too that it is necessary and long overdue. Let's pass House Resolution 40. Let's have these conversations. Let's correct wrongs. Let's make reparations. I will work to make the world a better place for everyone in this country. I am ready. I support you. I am listening. Sojourner Truth said, Ain't I a woman? Fannie Lou Hamer said, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And Margaret Burroughs asked, what do I tell my children who are black? I am Harriet Barlow, Executive Director of the Intersection at UNLV, and I am not okay. I am Dr. Renee T. Watson, Associate Vice President for Student Services and Campus Life. But when it really comes down to it, I'm a black woman who's a daughter, a friend, a sister, an educator, and I am not okay. The senseless killings of George Floyd and other black bodies that were taken too soon at the hands of police officers has got to stop. We must stand together. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best, justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. My name is Sherilyn Pollard Duradola. I'm a professor in the College of Education. I thought I would share with you how I am keeping myself motivated at this time. I am listening to powerful words. I am listening to words spoken by James Baldwin, Angela Davis, Dr. Bernice King, and others. I am reading powerful words. I am reading words written by James Baldwin, Coretta Scott King, and Martin Luther King. Why am I listening and reading important words? Because words have power. Words help us to translate our meaning and help us to connect with each other. So at this time, I'm making a conscientious effort to stay connected to our ancestors and also those of the present movement. Here's some words I'd like to leave with you. And these were words spoken by Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass says, it is not light that we need, but fire. It is not the gentle shower 
but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. These are all symbols of action, of actions that are so powerful that they can't help but to bring about positive change. So we are united together. Let's continue to make progress.